The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And today, tomorrow, always... L-S-M-F-T. No doubt about it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. So remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, fine tobacco. Season after season, at market after market, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco that means a fine smoke for you. Yes, for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. American. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll bet you often wondered what happens immediately after a program goes off the air. Well, let's go back to last Sunday. Jack Benny has just finished his broadcast. Okay, Phil, okay, cut it. Cut it, Phil, we're off the air. Well, folks, how did you like the program? Well, I'm... I'm glad you did. Ladies and gentlemen, you were a wonderful audience. Just wonderful. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all here in the studio again. You'll never see me again, bub. (laughs) What? I wouldn't sit through another one of your shows if I was in the front row. Your guest star was Sally Rand, her balloon had a slow leak, and my wife wasn't with me. (laughs) Well. Look here, uh, look here, mister, you're too fresh. You know, you'll never get tickets to my show again. What tickets? Last night I'm walking down the street, a guy throws a sack over my head, gives me a bump on the noggin, and when I come to, I'm sitting here in a studio. <laughs> Gee, I, I know my producer wants all the seats filled, but I wish he'd stop using that blackjack, you know? Jack, do you mean to say the only way you can get an audience is to have your producer go around hitting people on the head? Well... Gosh, and I always thought before we go on the air that bong, bong, bong were chimes. No. No, no, Mary, that's three more coming in. Last week, one guy's head was out of tune and loused up the whole network. (laughs) But we just, we just give them a light tap on the head. It, It only raises a little bump. Little bump? Yeah. My bump's got snow on it. I mean, well, don't blame the weather on me. Anyway, mister, the show is over, so you can go. Okay, okay. This is the last time I pass NBC without a helmet. (laughs) All right, all right. Say, Jackson, uh, I'm going to run along now. Oh, just a minute, Phil. I want to talk to you. What is it this time? Well, Phil, I can see now why that guy and the rest of the audience have no respect for our show. Why? What did I do? Phil, do you have to have that bottle of bourbon sitting on the table right next to you while you're leading the band? Certainly. When I use my hand to give the boys a downbeat, I ain't gonna bring it up empty. (laughs) What? Can I go now, Jackson? The ice in my pocket is melting. (laughs) Phil, Phil, I can't understand you. Standing out here on the stage in front of an intelligent audience. 350 people with bumps on their heads. And you act that way. I can't understand you at all. Nobody can understand me, Jackson. I'm a character. People love me for what I am. For what you are. Phil, that and where elephants go to die are the two unsolved mysteries of the universe. (laughs) Believe me. But look, Phil, Phil, I'm not asking for good music. All I'm asking is that you and your orchestra look dignified. This is a big radio show. Tell your boys to take down that clothesline they got stung across the stage there. That's no clothesline, that's a direct wire to Santa Anita. 
Santa Anita. Now cut that out! <laughs> what a bunch of guys. Phil, look at that new violinist you got sitting there during the whole program wearing a derby. Derby, that's a bump on his head. I have trouble getting people, too. <laughs> that I'm sure of. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack, why don't you stop picking on Phil? As long as I've been with you, you've had trouble with your orchestra leaders. Me? Yeah, I'll never forget how mad you got at Johnny Green when he wanted to put four clarinets in the orchestra. Well, that's where you're wrong, sister. Even though I was paying for it, I had no objection to Donnie Green adding four clarinets. I know, but you made him hire one man with a wide mouth. <laughs> well, I thought it would be novel. And oh boy, what George Olson went through with you. He even took a swing at you. So what? I was plenty fast, wasn't I? I'll say you were fast. By the time Olson took off his coat and rolled up his sleeves, you ran out of the building, took an eye test, and came back wearing a pair of glasses. <laughs> oh, Mary, why do you say things like that? You know very well that I try to help everybody on my program. Some help. He even cut my song out today. Believe me, Mary. People ought to know what I go through just to put on a show. He'd like to cut my song out every week. You know, Mary, there's a lot more to radio program. I mean, than just talking into a microphone. If my mother was here, she'd punch him right in the nose. <laughs> what? Glasses or no glasses. Dennis, what are you mumbling about? What? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, hello. Gee, what a coincidence. I was just talking about you. I know, I heard you. What's wrong? You cut my song out today. Oh, oh, well, I'm sorry, kid. I had to do it because of time. But you can do the song next week. How do you know you like it? You didn't even hear it. Well, all right, let's hear it now. Okay. Hmm? Oh, come on. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. What? I say, pardon me, Mr. Benny. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Kitzel. Hello. Oh, ho, ho, hold it a minute, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were never going to get here. I didn't... <laughs> I was going to do half of last week's show over again. <laughs> the part that was good. But uh, hold it a minute, Dennis. Look, if you came to see my show, Mr. Kitzel, you're a little late. You know, we just, we just went off the air. Oh, that's all right. I was sitting in my car. Well, did you like the program? Did I like your program? Ho, ho, ho. I missed it. You I missed, missed it? it oh, yes. oh, I see. <laughs> but, but I was in here to see your show last week. Good. Where'd you get the tickets? Who needs tickets? I was nonchalantly walking down the street when all of a sudden somebody threw a sack over me. I got a bump on my head. And the next thing I knew, somebody is whispering in my ear, welcome to NBC. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you missed the program today, but maybe you can come back next week. Huh? Well, I'll try. Uh, by the way, Mr. Benny, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, will you please give me an autograph for my nephew? Your nephew? Yes, he's been in the army four years and he's visiting me from Oahu. Oh, from uh, Honolulu, Oahu? No, Cleveland, Oahu. <laughs> That's Ohio, Ohio. Oh, yes. Anyway, here you are, Mr. Kitzel. Here's, here's my autograph. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye. Try to get here earlier next yeah. time. <laughs> Come on, Dennis! Dennis, let's have your song. I want to... Gently beating 
sublime We'd find that our love Is unaltered by time Dear as I held you So close in my arms Angels were singing a hymn Hearts gently beating were murmuring low. I, darling, I love you. Oh. Swell song, a swell song, Dennis. Very, very good. Come on, Mary, I'll take you home. Now. Okay. Will you drop me off on the way, Mr. Benny? Sure, kid, sure. Come on, let's go. You know, Dennis, that certainly was a swell number, the anniversary song. Would you like to sing it at my birthday party next week? Sure, Mr. Benny. How old are you gonna be? Fifty. Thirty-eight. <laughs> Mary, he asked me. I'm uh, I'm thirty-eight, Dennis. Gosh, I'm twenty-six and I'm worried. <laughs> Why? Look what can happen to me in just twelve years. <laughs> Well, don't worry about it, kid. Everything will be all right. Oh, say, kids, before we start for home, let's go in the drugstore here and get a soda, huh? Okay. Here are three stools here. Let's sit here. All right. Oh, there's that same soda clerk. I can't stand him. Well, my heart didn't go pitter-patter when you came in, Blue Eyes. <laughs> Why he hates me. So just take, just take our orders. What have you got? We have sodas, parfaits, splits, flips, sundaes, malt, sherbets, orangeade, and Dr. Scholl's foot pads. <laughs> I mean, what are the Dr. Scholl's foot pads for? For our ice cream corns. I knew you'd ask me. <laughs> oh, brother, I'd like to point him out to my producer. Waiter, give me a chocolate soda. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, what about you, Dennis? Give me a banana split. I hate them, but I've got to have something expensive now that I've got my own show. <laughs> oh, fine. And what are you going to have, Headless Valley? <laughs> Look, clerk, why is it I can... Oh, Jack, let it go. Just give me your order. Okay, give me a vanilla ice cream soda. Say, Jack, have you ever seen one of those soda clerks who can throw the ice cream up in the air and catch it in the glass? I can do that. You can? Certainly. Watch this. <laughs> Whoops, miss. Sorry. <laughs> uh, where did it go? Don't look now, but you got a toupee a la mode. <laughs> what? You mean that scoop of ice cream is on my head? Waiter, do something about it. All right, all right. What's taking you so long? I'm putting a cherry on top. <laughs> a cherry? Would you mind sitting in our window a couple of days? <laughs> no, I'm not making any personal appearances this year. Okay, here are your drinks, folks. I don't know why it is I always have to run into him. How's your soda, Mary? Swell. Dennis, don't eat your banana split so fast. I want to finish it before I get sick. <laughs> That's the silliest thing I ever heard. You know, Mary, this vanilla soda is very good. Mine was too. Well, I'm all finished. Me too. Uh, you're through with your soda, aren't you, Jack? Just a minute. There's a little left at the bottom. I've only got one show. You know. <laughs> Oh, Jack, come on. Just a minute. <laughs> if you strike oil, the glass belongs to me. <laughs> Never mind. 
How much is the check, clerk? 65 cents. No, 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 Dennis. I'll pay for no, it. No, no, Mr. Benny. I'll pay for it. No, 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 Dennis. Let me pay for it. Careful, Jack. He may take you up on that. <laughs> huh? Remember me? I'm your guardian angel. I was here to stop you from paying this check. Oh, yes. Yeah, you kept me from drinking that iodine last week. Yes, and now I'm saving you from a fate worse than death. What? I've gotten you out of situations like this many times before. You have? Oh, yes. Remember that night in Ciro's when you were having dinner with all those movie stars? Uh-huh. Well, it was I who took the check away from you and gave it to Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> Gee, and I, I thought the wind did that, huh? But, but why are you always trying to save my money for me, Angel? Well, you see, we angels need money, too. You do? Yes, and we figured if anybody would find a way to take it with them, it would be you. <laughs> By the way, Jack, I wish you'd stop telling everybody you're only 38 years old. But why, Angel? Why? Well, every time you tell a little fib, it thunders up where we are. Oh. And around your birthday, we can't hear ourselves think. <laughs> really? Yes. Even though your birthday is on St. Valentine's Day, it sounds like the 4th of July. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try and watch it. You know, sometimes, Angel, I Jack, just... who are you talking to? Huh? Why don't you stop mumbling to yourself? Mary, I... I wasn't mumbling to myself. I... I was talking to my... Oh, you wouldn't believe it anyway. Come on, kids, let's go. There's my car over there. Oh, Jack, Jack. Huh? Oh, what is it, Don? Uh, Jack, you left the studio so fast I didn't get a chance to talk to you about next week's commercial. Well, Don, we can talk about that later. But, Jack, I've got your quartet here, the sportsman, and I want you to hear a new arrangement. Don, not out here on the street corner. People will think we're crazy. Go away, fellas. Go away. <laughs> fellas, look, not out here. Look, Don, this is no place to rehearse a commercial. Not out on the street. But, Jack... You can it... let me hear it Saturday when we come back to the studio. But Jack, it'll only take a minute. Well, out on the street. I mean, a crowd is gathering. All right, take it, boys. Tico, Tico. Tico, Tico. Tico, 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 Tico take a lot. Don, look. O-L-S-M-F-T, the cigarette for me. O-L-S-M-F-F-F-F-F-T. Don, people oh, are gathering. Oh, it's it's a fully packed. Oh, it's so free and easy, easy on the dream. O-L-S-M-F-T, O-L-M-N-O-P. Our lucky strike, we sing so merrily in tune. Well, that's what Speedy Rich can make his tongue do jig. With LSMFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
but it definitely wasn't the best years of our life. <laughs> oh, well, I don't care what you and your friends think. That program will cause lots of comment. You should have heard some of them. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, by the way, boss, a couple of telegrams came for you. Thanks. Read them to me, Rochester. This one's from Fred Allen. Fred Allen? What does it say? It says, congratulations on your birthday next Friday. Heard your program tonight and thought it was very bad. Hope you have many more. <laughs> nice birthday wire to send me. Give me that other one. Here you are. Rochester. Rochester, listen to this. Congratulations, Jack Benny, on your forthcoming birthday. On my special news broadcast at 6.55 tonight, I'm going to pay you a great tribute. Be sure and listen. Signed, H.V. Caltenborn. Rochester, we got to listen to that. Yes, sir. I'm going to call my whole gang and tell them about it. That's right, Mary. H.V. Caltenborn at 6.55. He's going to pay me a tribute. I'm not kidding, Phil. At 6.55, listen to H.V. Caltenborn. Now, don't forget, Dennis. Be sure to listen to H.V. Caltenborn at 6.55. I can what? Oh, your mother said that. Well, anyway, don't forget to listen. Yes, Don, I know it's true. He sent me a wire. Caltenborn's going to give me a big tribute, 6.55. Goodbye. I know it sounds impossible, but it's true. Be sure to listen at 6.55. Rochester, who are you talking to? I don't know. I'm just calling numbers at random. <laughs> good, good. My goodness, look what time it is. Hey, Caltenborn must be on now. Turn on the radio. Okay. However, more concessions were exchanged by the United States and Russia in the privacy of United Nations conference room. That's him. That's Caltenborn. It was announced from London that the King and Queen of England were having a very pleasant ocean voyage on their way to South Africa. A light gale marred their trip temporarily, but once again, they're sailing on calm seas. <laughs> they can read that stuff in the papers. Get to me. In Beverly Hills, California. That's it. That's it. The mayor announced that the sewer system would have to be overhauled. <laughs> seems that the pipes are inadequate to carry off the rains that pour in from nearby states. As you know, California has an ordinance against rain. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the sponsor of the special program, the publishers of the Encyclopedia Britannica, would like to bring you a testimonial from a satisfied user. Oh. Here he is, Mr. Clarice Pierpont. Uh, I've been reading the Encyclopedia Britannica continuously now for two years. I know all about the birds and the bees and all that kind of stuff. It even tells in there that Richard wasn't the first one who wouldn't open the door. <laughs> Gee, they got everything in there. Uh, tell me, Mr. Pierpont, when did you buy your set of Encyclopedia Britannica? Uh, I didn't buy it. Uh, I was on information, please, and they hit me over the head with it. Oh, get that over with, will you? Now, back to the news. All over America, we're celebrating National Boy Scout Week. Since 1910, more than 13 and a half million American boys and men have been members. Maybe I'm next. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special announcement to make. Here comes Rochester. That means me. What radio comedian will celebrate this birthday next Friday, February the 14th? It's me. It's me. This comedian, whom we all love and admire, is a very famous butler by the name of Rochester. Say, you're lucky he mentioned you, too. Yeah. Rochester was born in Oakland, California. <laughs> yes, and he attended the Oakland High School. Hmm. After graduation, Rochester went to work in his father's store. What is this? Quiet, boss. I want to hear it. <laughs> but having no love for business, Rochester decided to leave home and go to work. Santa Fe Railroad. Rochester, it's all about you. Boss, please! After working. Yes, after working for the railroad for five years, Rochester met a great comedian who was traveling from Los Angeles to New York. That's me. That was me. Tell him, Rochester. Tell him. You tell him. You're as close to him as I am. <laughs> what? And the name of this great radio star who discovered Rochester and is celebrating his birthday Friday, February the 14th is none other than... We're sorry to interrupt, Mr. Caltenborn, but here's another news item. What? It is raining in Beverly Hills. <laughs> now back to Mr. 
Kelvin Bond. And that concludes my special broadcast for this evening. Good night. Turn that off. Imagine. Imagine sending me a wire about a big tribute. He didn't even mention my name. You know, it's my birthday next Friday, Rochester. Not yours. I know, boss. Uh, by the way, how old are you going to be? 38. <laughs> Gee. Gee, that angel wasn't kidding. What'd you say, boss? Nothing, nothing. I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the angel on tonight's program was played by that great star, Mr. Victor Moore, and H.B. Caltenborn was impersonated by Ollie O'Toole. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, during the last war, the chief hope of our enemies was to divide the United States along racial and religious lines and thereby conquer us. Let's not spread prejudice. A divided America is a weak America, and we need the same harmony among our various racial and religious groups that was the source of our strength in war. Through our behavior, we encourage the respect of our children and make them better neighbors to all races and religions. Remind them that being good neighbors has helped make our country great and kept her free. Thank you. Well, Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, here is my good friend, Basil Rysdale. As you listen to the chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Mr. John Lawrence Cummins, an independent tobacco auctioneer of Santiana, Kentucky, was born and brought up in the tobacco business. Here's what he said. I've sold tobacco at auctions for over 19 years. In all that time, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, good-tasting tobacco. Tobacco that's got quality, real quality. I smoke Lucky's myself for 22 years. Quote, fine, good-tasting tobacco. Tobacco that's got quality, real quality. Unquote. Yes, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Cummins can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, remember. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all tune in next week as I'm going to have a birthday party and invite one of the world's greatest violinists, Mr. Isaac Stern. And I'll also invite Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. I hope you'll all... Ladies and gentlemen, the rain in Beverly Hills has now turned to orange juice. <laughs> Gee, I, I wish my swimming pool was empty. Good night, folks. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.